This is just one small point on the topic of how American businesses funded both sides of World War II. One other treasonous organization worth mentioning is the Union Banking Corporation of New York City. Not only did they finance numerous aspects of Hitler's rise to power, along with actual materials during the war, it was also a Nazi money laundering bank, which was eventually exposed for having millions of dollars of Nazi money in its vaults. The Union Banking Corporation of New York was eventually seized for violations of the Trading with the Enemy Act. Guess who the director and vice president of the Union Bank was? Prescott Bush, the father and grandfather of former U.S. Presidents George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush. Vietnam The United States' official escalation and entry into the Vietnam War came after an alleged incident involving two U.S. destroyers being attacked by North Vietnamese PT boats in the Gulf of Tonkin. This was known as the Gulf of Tonkin Incident. This situation was the catalytic pretext for massive troop deployment and full-fledged warfare. One problem, however, the attack on the U.S. destroyers by Vietnamese PT boats never happened. Former Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara stated years later that the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a mistake, while declassified documents released years later show that it was a farce, manipulated for the purposes of war. And once in the war, it was business as usual. In October 1966, President Lyndon Johnson lifted trade restrictions on the Soviet bloc, knowing full well that the Soviets were providing upwards of 80% of North Vietnam's war supplies. Consequently, the Rockefeller interests financed factories in the Soviet Union, which the Soviets used to manufacture military equipment and send it to North Vietnam. However, the funding of both sides in this conflict was only one side of the coin. In 1985, Vietnam's rules of engagement were declassified. This detailed what American troops were and were not allowed to do in the war. It included such absurdities as North Vietnamese anti-aircraft missile systems could not be bombed until they were known to be fully operational. No enemy could be pursued once they crossed the border of Laos or Cambodia. And most revealing of all, the most critical strategic targets were not allowed to be attacked unless initiated by high military officials. Apart from these illogical limitations, North Vietnam was informed of these restrictions and therefore could base entire strategies around the limitations of the American forces. This is why the war went on for so long. And the bottom line is this. The Vietnam War was never meant to be won, just sustained. This war for profit and resources resulted in 58,000 American deaths and 3 million dead Vietnamese. So. Where are we now? September 11th was the jumpstart for a hegemonic agenda, enabling the possibility of constant global warfare. It was a staged war pretext no different than the sinking of the Lusitania, the provoking of Pearl Harbor, and the Gulf of Tonkin lie. In fact, if 9-11 wasn't a planned war pretext, it would be an exception to the rule. It has been used to launch two unprovoked illegal wars, one against Iraq and one against Afghanistan. However, 9-11 was a pretext for another war as well, the war against you. The Patriot Act, Homeland Security, the Military Tribunals Act, and other legislations are all completely designed to destroy your civil liberties and protect those in power. Currently in the United States, unannounced to most Americans, your home can be searched without a warrant, without you being home, you can in turn be detained indefinitely, with no charges revealed to you, no access to a lawyer, and legally tortured, all under the suspicion that you might be a terrorist. If you need a painted picture of what is happening, let's recognize how history repeats itself. In February 1933, Hitler staged the false flag attack, burning down his own German parliament building, the Reichstag, blaming it on communist terrorists. Within the next few weeks, he passed the Enabling Act, which completely eradicated the German constitution, destroying people's liberties. He then led a series of preemptive wars, all justified as necessary to maintaining homeland security. Und 
der sich mit ihm verprügelnden anderen Organisationen endet dies nicht. Our enemy is a radical network of terrorists and every government that supports them. It's time to wake up. The people in power go out of their way to make sure you are perpetually misled and manipulated. The majority's perception of reality, especially in the political arena, is not their own. It is shrewdly imposed upon them without them even knowing it. For example, the public at large now believes the invasions of Iraq and the Middle East, along with the resulting instability, are the consequences of political and military mistakes. What the public fails to see, of course, is that the destabilization of the Middle East is exactly what the Western interests want. This war is to be sustained so the region can be divided up, domination of the oil maintained, continual profits reaped for defense contractors, and most obviously, permanent military bases established to be used as launching pads against other oil-bearing, non-conforming countries such as Iran. For further implication that the Middle East destabilization is purely intentional, in 2005, two elite British SAS officers were arrested by Iraqi police after being caught driving around in their car, shooting at civilians while dressed up as Arabs. After being arrested and taken to a jail in Basra, the British army immediately demanded the release of these men. When the Basra government refused, British tanks came in and physically broke out the men from the Basra prison. If you wish to destroy an area, how do you do it? Well, there are two ways. You can go in there and bomb it and so forth, but that is not very efficient. What you do is you try to get the people in that area to kill each other and to destroy their own territory, their own farms. And that's what's been done in that area. The way in which you destroy an opponent is get him to destroy himself by dividing his ranks against one another. Then you feed both sides. You have agents feeding both sides, inflaming both sides. And they kill each other off. And it's time that some of us woke up to this reality to understand that people who try to maintain empires and create empires do it by manipulating the people they're trying to conquer. You might want to ask yourself why the entire culture is utterly saturated with mass media entertainment from all sides, while the educational system in America continues its stupefying downward slide since the U.S. government decided to take over and subsidize the public school system. What your government pays for, it gets. When we understand that, then we look at government-financed institutions of education and see the kind of students and the kind of education that's being turned out by these government finance schools, logic will tell you that if what is being turned out in those schools was not in accord with what the state and the federal government wanted, then it would change it. The bottom line is that the government is getting what they have ordered. They do not want your children to be educated. They do not want you to think too much. That is why our country and our world has become so proliferated with entertainments, mass media, television shows, amusement parks, drugs, alcohol, and every kind of entertainment to keep the human mind entertained so that you don't get in the way of important people by doing too much thinking you had better wake up and understand that there are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. We're in a lot of trouble because you people and 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now because less than 3% of you people read books because less than 15% of you read newspapers because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, 
Prime Minister says this tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it all falls into the hands of the wrong people. And when the largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network. So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You eat like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. The last thing the power establishment wants is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking. This is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. It is in their interest to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the Council on Foreign Relations. After maintaining a close friendship with Nicholas Rockefeller, Aaron eventually ended the relationship, appalled by what he had learned. Uh, I got a call one day from um, an attorney woman I knew, and she said, would you like to meet one of the Rockefellers? I said, sure, I'd love to. And uh, we became friends, and um, he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there, Aaron. And out of that event, you're going to see we're going to go into Afghanistan, so we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East. And we're going to go into Venezuela and, and try and get, and get rid of Chavez. And uh, the first two they've accomplished, Chavez they didn't accomplish. And uh, I said, you're going to see guys going into caves looking for, <laughs> looking for people uh, that they're never going to find. You know, he was laughing about the fact that you have this war on terror, there's no real enemy. He's talking about how by having this war on terror, you can never win it because this is, so it's an eternal war, and so you can always keep taking people's liberties away. And I said, how are you going to convince people that this war is real? He said, but the media, the media can convince everybody it's real. I mean, you know, it's just that you keep talking about things, you keep saying it over and over and over again, and eventually people believe it. You know, you created the Federal Reserve in 1913 through lies. You create 9-11, which is another lie. Through 9-11, you, then you're fighting a war on terror. And now all of a sudden you go into Iraq, which was another lie. And now they're going to do Iran. You know, and it's all one thing leading to another, leading to another, leading to another. Now I would say, to them, what, are you, what are you doing this for? What, what, what's the point of this thing? You have all the money in the world you ever want. You have all the power. I said, you know, you're hurting people. It's, it's not a good thing. And he would say, what do you care about the people for? Take care of yourself and you take care of your family. And then I said to him, What's the ultimate, what are the ultimate goals here? He said, the ultimate, the, goal, the ultimate goal is to get everybody in this world chipped with the chip, with the RFID chip, and uh, have all money be on those chips and everything on those chips. And if anybody wants to protest what we do or violate what we want, we just turn off that chip. How far will the sickness of power go? To what lengths will those in control go in order to maintain and preserve their positions?